from New York to Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week's adventure, The Island of the Dead. Look, Holmes, if I stand by the edge of this rock, I can just reach that rope ladder. Then we can sneak aboard the ship. Seize the rope, Watson. Quickly. Careful. Uh, got it, Holmes. Up we go. Oh, this blasted rope is slippery. Silent, Watson. If we make the slightest sound, someone on that deck will blow our heads off. Well, Dr. Watson, just what was the Island of the Dead? An incredibly ghastly spot, Mr. Hebbs. Forsaken, uninhabited. It was the extreme southeastern end of the channel, out of Felt. In 1899, a young lad named Jim Saunders and his bride Peg were sailing on a honeymoon voyage. There was Jim, Peg, and Jim's man, a Chinese, Lin Si Fang, who cooked helped to handle the trim little sailing boat, and occasionally provided entertainment by singing, then chanting crews, until Jim and Peg sighted the island. Curious, they anchored off the beach and went ashore, not realizing that they were on the island of the dead. Why Lynn didn't come along with us, Jim? Oh, he'll be along in a while, Peg, darling. He's polishing the brass <laughs> again. He wants it to shine under that wonderful moon. Oh, darling, he's an angel. Isn't it a strange beach? Hmm, why did you say that? And those reefs, like huge claws reaching into the sea. Those weird rock formations. The gnarled, petrified trees. It's unearthly, darling. As though we were on another planet. Do you suppose anyone's on this island? Oh, no, Peg, darling. It's impossible. Completely abandoned. Shall we walk down the beach? No, no, let's let's go inland. Oh, but darling, we've been lost. Oh, let's just walk a bit inland, Peg. Probably no human beings are here before for decades. Who knows? We'll we'll discover something. Let's stop here, Jim, and just stroll on the beach. Frightened? Yes, a little. <laughs> Silly. Oh, come. Come, let's have a look about you. Oh, steady, don't, don't fall on these rocks. Oh, please, Jim, let's go back to the ship. Darling, don't be absurd. I... What's that? Where? Lying in the sand. It's a skull, a human skull. Oh, Jim, we're going back to sailboat this instant. I knew there was something awful about this island. But there's no reason to be frightened. Oh, it was probably just the skull of an old sailor shipwrecked here centuries ago. Mm, probably, but we can't be sure. Oh, but Peg will never be here again. Very few people have an opportunity to see an island like this. Well, haven't you an adventurous spirit? Oh, come on. Oh, well. Watch, watch that bush. Now, that's the girl. Wait. Do you hear something? Yes. It sounded as though someone was behind us. <laughs> Couldn't be Lynn. He wouldn't steal about like that. Who's there? Who's there? Probably, probably just, just our imagination. Jim, I don't care what you say. We're going back to the ship. Hold right if you insist, but... <gasps> What's wrong now? Under that tree. It looks like another human skull. It is! It is! Come on, run back to the ship. Oh, calmly, Peg, calmly. Give, give me your hand. We'll, we'll go back. I hardly think so, sir. What? Where did you come from? He has a revolver, Jim. Who are you? The name is Cavendish. Yours? Saunders. We're, we're Mr. and Mrs. Jane Saunders. I'm obliged to ask both of you to board my ship. Your, your ship? I don't see it. It's anchored on the other side of this island. It's not visible from this point. Put, put that revolver down and, and get out of here. We're going back to our own ship. Answer my question. What are you doing on this island? Just... Scouting about, we're, 
We're on our honeymoon. We, we saw the island, wondered about it. You uh, were not sent here? Of course not. You see, there is the possibility that you were sent to investigate, that this is a ruse. There is also the fact that were I to allow you to leave the island, you might very well report my presence here. In another moment, you would have sighted my ship. Walk along past that great rock. I shall walk behind you. But who are you? What in the world are you up to? All in good time, ma'am. This is the island of the dead. It is my island. The skulls and bones of Lord knows how many men form a huge mountain of decay and death upon these desolate shores. You still haven't answered our question. What is this all about? Why can't we return to our own ship? Who are these dead men? The identity of the dead really shouldn't matter to you, sir. Very shortly, when I'm ready to set sail, you and your wife We'll be joining them. By George, Holmes, this is the sort of evening here at Baker Street that I relish. A fire crackling merrily along, adequate time for me to browse through my medical text. And for me to rummage about in the archives of crime, eh, Watson? I regret that your tranquility is about to be disturbed. Oh, oh, really? Yes, on our stairway, there are the steady, distinctive steps of a certain determined gentleman. They are the clumsy feet of the law. In short, our mutual acquaintance, Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. He will now pause for a moment to regain his breath. He will then assume his most authoritative air and knock. Lestrade is of that tiresome breed of humanity that's always predictable. I'll answer it. Well, good evening, Inspector Lestrade. Uh, Dr. Watson? Holmes? Uh, Lestrade, aside from the fact that you've traveled here via the underground, that you had luncheon at the Criterion Bar, uh, that you haven't been to Scotland Yard for some time, what additional information have you for me? Oh, Holmes, now, really. How do you arrive at those conclusions? Because, my dear Watson, in his left hand, Lestrade carries a variety of sweets sold only in the underground. Upon his shoes are white markings clearly made by a lime wash. The Criterion's repairing its main entrance with a wash, and Lestrade has managed to step into it. There's also a button missing from the sleeve of his jacket. He would never appear at the yard and risk censure without its being replaced. Therefore, he has not been to the yard for some time. I hope, Holmes, that this dazzling display of your brilliance will not be dimmed by the problem I'm about to present. Most unlikely, my dear Lestrade. Most unlikely. Now, look here. There's a young couple, a Jim Saunders and his bride, Peg. Mr. Saunders is the son of Henry Saunders. His father's a... He's an extremely wealthy collier, owns and operates mines at Newcastle. Yes, yes. Young Jim and his bride set sail from Falmouth on their honeymoon along with a Chinese cook, Lin Si Fang. They're promised to return shortly. But they vanished. Precisely. I presume you've examined the weather reports in that area? I have. The sea's been very calm. They, they couldn't have been shipwrecked by a storm. Was she a sturdy boat? In perfect condition, Dr. Watson. This was a maiden voyage. Young Saunders purchased the boat just before the wedding. Now, the elder Saunders is a good deal of a fuss budget. He's worried. He's also rather powerful politically. He turned the yard upside down, demanding an explanation of the couple's whereabouts. Mm. Did you telegraph an inquiry to the French coast, Lestrade? I did. And every village along our coast where they might have put in, and there's no sign of them. I see. It's a small vessel. They couldn't, couldn't possibly have sailed very far. But confound it, they couldn't simply disappear into thin air. It's the most, most fantastic riddle. And knowing that I have an eternal fascination for the inscrutable, you've decided to consult me. In the hope of tracking down Mr. and Mrs. Saunders before the elder Saunders caused his head to fall at the yard. That's a crude way of putting it, Holmes. But you've an extensive file on baffling cases. I thought perhaps there might be some precedent. Perhaps, perhaps you've a suggestion. I have a suggestion, Lestrade. What is it, Holmes? Speculation so early in the game, Watson, is useless. We have need of facts. Since the ship was last seen sailing from a certain port, I suggest we depart for that port immediately. Quickly, gentlemen, to Falmouth. <laughs>
Holmes, I venture to say you've led us on a fruitless and absurd journey. We've learned nothing here at Falmouth Harbour. Lestrade is correct, Holmes. We've spoken to the villagers. They simply confirmed that the young couple sailed from here. But now, riding about in the harbour in this police launch, shivering in this bitter cold night, it's pointless. I persist, gentlemen, that since Mr. and Mrs. Saunders disappeared from this harbour, these waters will eventually produce evidence, however flimsy, that will ultimately explain the mystery. One solves the crime at the scene of it. Aha, uh -huh, look. There, to the mist, off the port bow. The sailboat must be a madman at the wheel. She's zigzagging all over the place. If you make out what boat it is, so dark. I'll tell the constable to steer closer to it. Closer, man, closer to that sailboat. The start. Comparing the silhouette of that sailboat with the photograph shown to us just recently, I should say it's the ship belonging to young Saunders. It is. We found them, Holmes. We found them. A premature celebration. Obviously, all is not well aboard that boat we're approaching. Not under control. We're signals to them. The lantern! Signal that boat with our lantern, Constable. There, he's signaling. We'll see if they answer. Must be something wrong. They're not showing any light. Wait, wait, wait. See if they answer our lantern. No, no, they don't. That boat's lurching badly. Have an accident, you suppose? Sprung a leak? Notice, Lestrade, a dent in the prow. Pull alongside of her. We'll jump aboard. And I suggest it be done with great speed. He, too, will board us. Well, can you get over that rail, Holmes? I'm over, Watson. Uh, I'm with you. I'll just jump to the deck. <coughs> Come along, Holmes. We'll talk to that chap at the wheel. You see him? Well, you can't be alone aboard this boat, can you? Hello. Hello there. Who's I should say, gentlemen, we did not receive an answer to our signal, because the man at the wheel is utterly incapable of answering anything whatsoever. It's Saunders' servant, the Chinese, Lindsay Fang. Yes, he's been stabbed in the back. Yes. If your young couple is still alive, Lestrade, they're in mortal danger. They've lost their boat, their pilot stands alone, dead, up to his boots in his own blood, lashed to his wheel, and sailing the seven seas. Dr. Watson, we're, we're impatient to learn what Mr. Holmes did after discovering the body of the dead Chinese lashed to the wheel of young Saunders' ship. You will recall, Mr. Harris, that meantime, young Saunders and his bride were on the island, the prisoners of a burly stranger named Cavendish, who threatened to kill them. Of course, we knew nothing of this. Aboard Saunders' boat, which Holmes, Lestrade, and I had found in the sea off Falmouth, the three of us held a council in the cabin. Well, you must admit, Holmes, that we are stumped. There isn't a scrap of evidence aboard this boat as to where Jim Saunders and his bride have disappeared to. I beg to differ, Lestrade. One couldn't have a clearer picture unless one were presented with a detailed map of how to find their whereabouts. Then where are they, Holmes? With the entire ocean before us, I can't conceive of how we shall find them. Lestrade informed us, Watson, that the boat was new. This was her maiden voyage. Yet the prow is dented. Indubitably, therefore, this was due to the boat striking a rock or other impediment during this initial trip. In short, Saunders and his bride did reach land. But since the Saunders couple did not reach the French coast, as Lestrade told us, then they probably landed on some uninhabited island. Oh, that's very good, Holmes, but where in this vast sea is that island? You remember that I examined the body of the dead Chinese. The Chinese were stabbed with a long knife half a dozen times, but beyond that... Beyond that is the fact that rigor mortis, which ordinarily sets in within two to four hours after death, has not begun. Rigor was set in even more quickly in this instance due to the extreme cold. Post-mortem lividity adds to the authenticity of our conclusion. Although the corpse was erect and blood was streaming from the wound, complete post-mortem lividity has not developed. These two observations signify that the Chinese was murdered within the past few hours, perhaps within a shorter time. The island, Holmes. Where is the island? To answer that question, Watson, we now require these dividers, this chart of the seas on this table, and a pencil. Now... We assume that the average speed of the ship is approximately six knots. We observe the wind is 
north by northeast. If we draw a circle based upon these facts with its center at our present location, we have a perfect indication of approximately the point where this boat was within the past two hours. That's amazing, Holmes, amazing. Shall we proceed? Immediately, Watson. I'll give you a hand with the sails, Dr. Watson, and tell you at the wheel. Yes, that boy and girl may still be alive, though there's no telling what sort of hellish mess they're in. Hurry, man! Every stitch to the wind! Be seated, Mr. Saunders, Mrs. Saunders. I believe you'll find my cabin quite comfortable. Wine, rum... You have a favorite refreshment? No, Cavendish. This is the most outrageous. Your protests are of no avail, Mr. Saunders. We're the only persons within many miles of this island, and I've plenty of bullets in this gun. My crew has gone after your ship to do away with your Chinese deckhand. As soon as they informed me that he'd sailed off for help, I dispatched them. You must have set sail when you failed to return. My crew will pick up the supplies we require in Falmouth. And return shortly. What is this all about? This island is a priceless rendezvous for me, Saunders. I do not intend to have it publicized. But who are you? Cavendish is the name, sir. I'm a descendant of Cavendish the Pirate. Do you recognize the name in that connection? Yes, yes, I do. It's a great name. Ranking in the fabulous lore of piracy with those of... Drake, Hawkins, Morgan, Jean Lafitte. My ancestor commanded a flotilla under Sir Walter Raleigh. He was as fearless a buccaneer as ever to spoil the Indies or ravage the Spanish Armada. It was on a map he bequeathed to his heirs that I found a description of this island. But why is it the island of the dead? It was once a pirate rendezvous, ma'am. And the freebooters slew each other in struggles over loot, leaving the bones of the dead to rot, leaving the skulls you found. And this, this is your island? It is. Suffice it that I cannot afford for you to return to England with news of this island and of my ship. It's a quarter before one in the morning. My crew will arrive momentarily. Then... I shall kill the two of you. Well, Holmes, we've beached our boat and found the island. Now, how on earth shall we examine this, this gruesome territory? I would suggest, Watson, that we divide our forces. You and I shall circle about the island beginning toward the left. You, Lestrade, might investigate in the opposite direction. Very well. I have my revolver. Dr. Watson has his. Neither of us requires help. Suppose we fire an alarm. I'll meet you back here within an hour. Oh, right to us. Goodbye. Good luck, Ian. Good luck, Inspector. Come, come, Watson. Don't dawdle along. And have your revolver at the ready. Oh, oh this is exhausting, her Marching along this way, you know. I... Look, Holmes. There's a ship. A huge ship. Yes, on which we may find Mr. and Mrs. Saunders, Watson, and possibly the motivation for the death of the Chinese. We must go aboard, unobtrusively, of course. Follow me. Yes. The deck is deserted. It should be possible to sneak aboard unnoticed. Let's do it. Up the Jacob's Ladder, you see it? Dangling close to the edge of those rocks. Yes. I believe we can manage it. Uh, come on, Hope. Quietly, Watson, very quietly. But the master of this ship's been responsible for the ruthless murder of the Nisi Fang. I dare say he'd be delighted to add our names to the list, possibly with an even more loathsome technique. Here, if I stand to the edge of this rock, I can just reach that rope ladder. Careful, careful. Got it, Holmes. Got it. Then right up we go. Follow up behind me, Watson. When my eyes reach the level of the deck, I shall pause and have a look about. Now, up. Oh, this blasted rope is slippery. Silence, Watson. If we are heard, someone on that deck will blow our heads off. I can see the deck. Anyone inside? No. Come along. We'll step on the deck. Right by, Holmes. There we are. See anyone yet? No. Hear anything? 
Look down in that hold. This ship is loading. What sort of cargo is it? We'll have a closer look. Tiptoe. Yeah. What, what is all that in the hold? All that, Watson, is priceless. Priceless? Yes. There's the none of it's packaged. Just tossed into the hold. I see bottles in there. There's cloth. Chinaware. Special type of bottle and of cloth and of chinaware. Watson, we're losing time. We must search for the ship's master and our missing couple. They may be somewhere aboard, and we should find them. If, in the attempt, we're not surprised in a dark corner and garroted. <laughs> One o'clock, Mr. Saunders. I must prepare for the arrival of my crew. You and your wife now become a burden to me. Stand up, both of you. I said stand up, both of you. We would overdo it, Talbot, even before we reach this island, Cavendish. A search party must be out. They'll find you. I doubt it. Within the hour, we shall have steam up and put to sea. If they do find me, I shall simply say that I've never seen or heard of you. With your bodies at the lowest depth, it should be difficult to prove the contrary. Mrs. Saunders. Yes? I shall shoot you first. I'm a rather gentle soul, and I believe it best if you're spared the sight of your husband's death. You rotten! Don't you move, Mr. Saunders. This revolver is just a few inches from your wife's head. Now, one quick bullet, Mrs. Saunders. Like this. Oh, my shoulder! Are you all right, Peggy? Yes, but who fired? It came from that doorway. You may credit the excellent marksmanship to my friend and colleague here, Dr. Watson. I'll take Kevin. This is gun, Holmes. I have it. Oh, who the devil are you? My name is Holmes. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. We're very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. Indeed, you should be. I'm a private investigator, Mr. Cavendish. In addition to ordering someone to kill Lindsay Fang, in addition to detaining Mr. and Mrs. Saunders for the purpose of doing away with them... You have a cargo of stolen goods in the hold of this ship. So that's what it is. In the hold of this ship, you have a priceless collection of goods, all reported by the police of England and the continent as stolen or missing. You have Ming pottery, Renaissance paintings, tapestries, rare perfumes. I should say your crew uh, gathered these curiosities. You loaded them aboard. You used this island as a haven because you could not possibly afford to dock at an ordinary port with such a cargo. Now, I imagine you hope to sail a great distance. Yes, to the east, Mr. Holmes. He told us that. To Cairo, to Ayers, and Singapore. Of course, stopping at each port just long enough to secure a handsome price for his wares. Did you find our boat? Yes, we did. She's lying at the other end of the island. Shall we adjourn to that boat? Yes, let's get away from here. Planning to join us, Mr. Cavendish? No. No, I won't go back. I would accept the invitation if I were you. In the best criminal circles, Mr. Cavendish... An invitation from Mr. Sherlock Holmes is never the time. Is Mr. Cavendish safely tied up in the cabin, Watson? Yes, yes, he is, Holmes. Saunders and his bride will be out in a moment to help us set sail for Falmouth. Oh, oh. Why, it's Inspector Lestrade, come back from his search. <laughs> you know, I'd completely forgotten about him. Oh, I searched my side of the island thoroughly, Holmes. Couldn't find hide nor hair of young Saunders nor of his bride. Taking us here on a fool's errand, you've wasted unspeakably valuable time and you've obstructed the proper procedure of the law with your fantastic notions. I have, Lestrade. You have, sir. Uh, if you will step into this cabin... But what the... Inspector Lestrade, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Saunders and the gentleman responsible for Fang's murder and their kidnapping, Mr. Cavendish, our newest pirate. What? I am no ordinary foot pad, Inspector. I anticipate being treated as befits my station. If you will assign a well-manned police launch to this island, Bastard, they'll find a complete inventory of certain goods stolen from a dozen cities recently in the hold of Mr. Cavendish's vessel. Aboard it, in a short while, they'll also find his crew. Undoubtedly a prize catch of assorted scoundrels and thieves. <laughs> Well, you've done it again, Holmes. Yes, I must compliment you, Holmes. You've protected society from a notorious brigand. And you've saved two newly married youngsters who may now look forward to enjoying a full life together. <laughs> Sentimental nonsense. I've merely arrived at the solution of another problem in criminal detection. The lives of everyone involved in this case will soon be reduced to a few lines scribbled upon an index card in my files. 
They are proper perspective, Lestrade. They are proper perspective. Well, Dr. Watson, our journey to the Island of the Dead was breathtaking. the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockrum. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelton. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill with special music by Albert Berman. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of London Tower. Harris speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>